Hello everybody and happy new year. I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time I'm back with another solo card game that you can play with just a standard 52 deck of cards. And today I will be playing a game called Bowling Solitaire. Bowling Solitaire is this really neat game developed by Sid Saxon. Uh, they've developed a good number of other games, including one that I really enjoy, Can't Stop. Uh, but today we're going to be playing Bowling Solitaire. So it's a solo game, but you can also play it multiplayer if you want to compete against other people because it's a, just a beat your own score type of game. It's essentially emulating bowling, but with a deck of cards. Uh, so you take a normal deck of cards and all you need is the ace through 10 of two different suits. So I chose hearts and diamonds. Um, so you only really need half the deck. So if you want to play against someone else in a one on one bowling game, one deck of cards is enough for at least two people to play. And if you want to add more people, you just need, you know, a deck of cards per two players, essentially. Like I said, you get all you need is 20 cards, ace through 10 of two different suits. You shuffle them up and you set up a frame like this in a classic bowling style pins. You got the four, three, two and one. You do that with the 10 cards and then your other 10 cards, you shuffle into three different piles. Uh, you have a pile of five, a pile of three, and a pile of two. Um, you flip the top card over of each of these side piles, and they make up the different bowling balls that you can grab to use for the frame. So what you do is, in this, like normal bowling, you kind of play one frame at a time, where for each frame, you get to roll two balls to try to knock down all the pins. Uh, how it works is, whatever ball you grab, you can knock one to three pins down, but you have to do a little arithmetic because you add up the total of the pins you're knocking down and the last digit of whatever that sum is has to be the same as whatever card you drew. So if I, you know, pick five as my bowling ball, that means the last digit of whatever like card combination I knock down has to be five. So I either have to knock down five worth of pins, 15 worth of pins, or 25 worth of pins. Same with this nine here. I can knock down just a nine, or I can knock down 19 worth of pins, or 29, you know, value worth of pins. Uh, but you just basically add up the three cards. So if I was trying to knock down this four, this two, and this eight, well, that's 14 total that ends in a four. If I had a four here, I could use it, but I don't. So that's not an option I can choose. And so you'll, you'll pick a ball, Let's just say I'm using this ace and trying to hit, I don't know, this, um, I don't even see any combination I can really use off the bat. Because on the very first roll of each round, you cannot hit the back row. You can also not just single out the center pin. Any other combinations you can do. Um, hold on, let me, let me find some combination that actually works here. Okay, so if I wanted to, for example, knock over this six, that six, and that seven, that's a total of 19. I have a nine, so I could do that. Now how that works is once I were to use this ball up, I would also then take out these three cards, set them off to the side along with this ball. Then I would flip over the top pile or the top card of the pile for, that I drew from for the ball. And though you normally only get two balls, it, it, it's kind of weird how this game works. And you get essentially like multiple throws per ball to like emulate the pins getting knocked down. So let's just say I take the seven, six, and six. Then what I could do is my next roll, I can try to hit more pins down with whatever three cards I have, but they have to be at least adjacent to the ones I just knocked down, which luckily they were in the center, so I could pretty much hit any combination of pins. If you ever reach a point when you can't knock any more pins down, then that's essentially your first ball used up. And what you do then is you take the top card of each of your ball piles, you discard it, you flip over the next cards, and then that's your second roll. You do that, keep rolling and trying to hit pins down until you've knocked either all of them down or you're at a spot where you can't do anything else. And then that's essentially that. You mark your score on here, you proceed to the next frame, you play 10 frames for a full game. Um, just like in regular bowling, which this may be something I kind of mess up on because there's a whole page almost as much rules for scoring as there is for the actual game about how to score for bowling. Because when you get a spare or a strike, you don't initially write the score in the frame. If you get a spare, you wait till you roll your next ball and then you add that on to whatever your spare total is. 
and for a strike it's the next two balls so it's it plays just like normal bowling scoring which i am not really familiar with so i will probably make some mistakes on that aspect um but that's essentially it you just reset after each frame 10 more pins your three piles of balls you're grabbing a ball throwing it hoping you can knock all the pins down um that's pretty much it as far as rules go uh, i'll just kind of hop right into it and you can see how it's played so let's get started so i kind of was using that nine as an example to knock down that six six and seven which is a idea that's an idea but the issue is i'm grabbing this off my ball pile that only has two balls in it and that's not good um this bottom pile has five so i definitely i want to try to use this five if possible just because there's more cards in that pile like once i use up this nine if i need more cards there's only one other card in that pile and that's it so let me see if i can make this five or this one work somewhere around here dang i'm really not seeing much i mean other possibilities i could go seven six and two that would give me 15 total. Then that four is gonna be up here by itself. And that means I'm gonna be needing a singular four to pop up over here to try to get rid of that, which I don't love, but that is using the five. I could go with the nine, but then I'm only left with one ball, but I kind of like that option better. So I think uh, that is what I'll do. So I'll set this off to the side, grab this six, seven, and six, set those off to the side, flip over my next ball. And it's another five, which is, not super great uh luckily there are some options i still have i mean i have this four now i can start using the pins in the back and knocking them down i have this four and one there and i have fives galore so i'll go ahead and i could also knock down the two and eight that's another well, i guess that that's not five well that is five that's ten i was thinking in five increments but it has to end in a five so yeah i'll go ahead and knock down this four and this ace and use this five for that definitely because that's on the good pile and that gives me a nine hmm i think i'm just kind of screwed i mean i have nothing but even numbers out here and i just have odd numbers here which is which is trouble um there's really no way i can make this work so i think that's my first ball i don't think i'm getting a, a strike or a spare so then i take the top ball of each pile discard it so now i only we're gonna have two piles going into this uh next bowl I get 10 and 10. Luckily, there's two 10 combinations, so I just need a four to pop up. Uh, See, so yeah, I'll use this 10 to, to knock out these two. And we'll do that. Um, We'll use this 10 to knock out these two. And if there's not a four, then I'm just going to be left with one pin. Unfortunately, I get a three. It's not a four, so I'm left with one pin. So for frame one, that gives me a score of nine. And I'll go ahead and reset all this. All right, here's the next frame. And I think I already see a good play. I've been looking here for a second. I can hit this five, that's six, and that's four. That's 15 total, and I can use my five ball to knock all of that down. And that seems like a pretty good... Uh, first play now we just gotta see how the pins fall now we have a one which i do have 11 up here that i could go for so i think i will i mean i could also get the 10 7 4 that's 21 that would also work for my situation i'm gonna go for this nine and two instead spend that and use this ball this is going a little bit better than last time um okay i have six eight and nine to work with well, I do have 18 here. Um, that is an option. I'm just looking at what else I possibly could do because then adding these up, that doesn't really work either way. So I'm going to be really relying on whatever I draw or I could just take out the eight, flip that over. And then, I mean, that's still not going to really help my situation because either I'll have like 20 or 21 or eh, none of those numbers really help. So I'm going to knock out both of these. Both of those pins fall. I'm going to use my eight for that. Hope I get something I can actually use. That's a 10, which I can use. I can knock out both of those pins with the 10, but then I'm just waiting on a four to try to get this strike. And that is a two. So no strike for me onto my second ball. And if I don't get a four on this first flip, I will lose. Not lose, but I just don't get to. Yeah, I don't get a spare. So that's another nine score for this frame. All right, frame number three. Uh, this is what I have to work with. Uh, I actually think I got a decent option right off the bat because I have this 
8, 5, and 9, which adds up to 22, and I do have that 2 sitting there. So I think I will hit those first, and then we'll see how the rest of these pins shall fall. Uh, we do have an 8, which I have... I could go 18. That's actually a big move. But I also... that's... I maybe want to save that just in case. Um, just in case for what? Because, I, I mean, I have my one option, which I'm not seeing much right now. I mean, I guess I could... I guess that's also 18, and I can use this for my one. That would give me 11. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'll knock both of these out with my one ball and see what I flip over. That's a three. Okay. Well, if I knock that out with that, but I'd still be waiting on an ace to show up just for that, which I, or I can, oh, if only, you can only knock down one to three pins. It would be really nice if I could knock down four because then I could do 19, clear that with the nine and then I have my three for that. Um, I'll still clear the three. I'll do that first and then see what I get and what I can work with. Okay, a 10. Um, that's good. I'm gonna get a strike because I can knock out the 10 pin with my 10. That's good there. And then that leaves me with four, eight, nine, and I have a nine. So nice, I finally got a strike. All right, first strike. So I will mark that as an X in frame three, but then I don't add, I don't put a score in the frame yet because I gotta wait till I bowl my next two balls to see what I have to add. Because it'll be 10 plus whatever my next two balls is what will be added to 18. Hopefully I'm doing all my bowling scoring right. Like I said, I'm not very uh, proficient in that. So I'm, I'm probably going to make a mistake or two along the way. All right. So first ball of frame four. Um, got a nine, four, and six to work with here. And I see some really good options right off the bat. I mean, namely these front three pins, that adds up to 29, and my nine ball is what I wanted to use, and that does clear a lot. So I will definitely do that as my initial bowl, and then we'll just see how the pins fall. I have an eight, and I'm already seeing I got 18 right there, and I'm probably just gonna go ahead and clear that. I mean, might as well uh, do that. My next two are probably gonna be groups of like two instead of groups of three, but let me see what I have to work with. So I have options here. Um, not great ones, but I have options. Because essentially, I mean, I could knock down... I, yeah, I got a lot of different combinations. Because I could knock down this two and that one and that three. That gives me six. I can use that six. I could also just knock down the three and the ace with my four. I don't have a nine. I've already used up one of my nines. Two of my... Both nines are gone. So I know there's not another nine coming. I would have to basically hope for another two and another seven. Or I can knock down all three of these and hope for just a seven. I mean, that seems like a little bit better option. I'm gonna go for it. So this will be six total, and then I can use my six ball for this. And then I just have to really hope for a seven. And if I get a seven, that's another strike. Uh, and that's an ace. So unfortunately, first ball, no good. Uh, nine pins isn't bad, but can I get a spare? Will I flip a seven? I do not. So unfortunately, that's just uh, a zero pins for that. My, it's a miss, I guess, for my uh, second ball there. And so um, that's a nine total. But first I have to add. So that's 19 is what I'm adding to 18. And then I got to add nine to this score. I think that's how it works. Yeah, so I think that's how it scoring works. So I add 19 to 18. That gives me 37 for my strike score. And then I add nine to that for this frame. That gives me a score of 46. Let me know if I'm doing my scoring completely wrong. Like I said, there was just about as much rules in the, in the rules for how to do the scoring than there is for the actual game. And like I mentioned, I'm pretty new to bowling scoring. So uh, yeah, I'm probably messing it up, but hopefully I'm not. All right, frame number five. Um, Got a five, an ace, and an eight to work with. I got some options. Um, what I'm looking at right now is a seven and eight. That gives me 15. I could add 10 to that 25. I could use my five ball for that. And it kind of seems like probably what I should do. So I will go ahead and do that. Flip this over. I get a four. Uh, I do have 14 here. Um, I'm gonna just go with that unless there's anything else nearby I could do. Let me double check. I guess I could go that and that for 14 or I could add on the seven, that'd be 21 and then I could use my ace. 
Maybe that's the better move. Because I could save that four and knock it just out by itself with that ball. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. So then, yeah, because that's 12, 21. I'll use my ace to do that and hope I get a good ball. It's a two. Okay. Interesting. Um, I kind of just want to knock out the four with the four. And then, I mean, I can knock out the 10 and the... Oh, this is perfect, right? Because that's 19, 21. I have an ace. That is another strike for frame five. So I'll go ahead and record that. And uh, yes, I won't add in the score yet. After I do frame six, I will add that on. Unless, you know, I get a strike or a spare on, I guess that'd just be a strike on just frame six. Then I would add the score on frame seven. Once again, I, I'm still not completely clear on how all this works. All right. Whoa. Balls are all crooked there. That could be taken out of context. <clears throat> all right. So frame number six just got a strike. So let's see if I can do it again. Got a six, three and a six here. Um, what I'm looking at right now is what was I just seeing? Oh, yeah, this I can make a two and a five. That's a seven plus nine at 16. And I can use my first ball for that, which I think I'm going to do. Like I said, I like prioritizing the stack that has five balls in it just because then I have more to work with. Uh, we got an eight, which I could just knock out that one and ace, which I'm not hating the idea of. I'm just looking at what else I have going on and what I'm because. Yeah, I will, we'll go with it. Let's just do it. Let's just bowl. Let's wing it and see what happens. See how the pins fall. OK, so I have a six, three and an eight. Yeah, not uh, not great options here. One thing I'm seeing is I could use the eight and knock down the two fours in the back, but then that's going to put me in a weird position. Where I'm going to be banking on getting a seven by itself. And I'll either need an ace and a nine separately or a 10 to come up, which I guess we've already seen one nine. So another nine coming up is not likely, but we haven't seen either 10. And I think that bodes well for us. Um, but we have already also seen one seven. So me doing my eight idea would basically guarantee I get a spare. Um, is, do I have any other options? I don't know if I do. Because I got this, that's 10. I don't have a 10. I can add four to that 14. I don't have a four. Um, I can do that. That's nine. That doesn't do me any good. That's 12. That doesn't do me any good. I don't have anything like by itself I can target. So I think I just have to do the eight in the back. And well, yeah, no, I think I pretty much have to do that with the eight. I don't love it. It's not, I'm not gonna get a strike, but We'll see what I get. We got a five. Um, that is useless. That is my first ball. No good. No, no strike, no spare. Well, no strike. I can maybe. No, I don't think I'm going to spare, but I'll I'll get as close as I can. Uh, there's the first 10 and there's not going to be another seven. So I'll be able to at least knock that out. Um, then there's just there's a zero chance of this being a seven. Oh, it's a two. Yeah, so as nine pins total, so I have to add 19 to my frame four score for my strike. OK, so if I'm doing my scoring right, I believe I'm at 74 for my current score as we head on into frame number seven. All right, frame seven, all set up. My bowling ball options are four, five and six. Um, so I've been looking at this for a second, and I think what I'm going to do is target the nine, two and three. That's 14 total that allow me to use my first ball, I am going to be banking on me getting an ace by itself, but I think that's okay. I'm not terribly worried about that. So let's let's see what I get. So it's an eight. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's much I can do with that at the moment. Um, let me look at what I can do here. See, the issue is there's a couple of options, but they're not great in my situation. Okay. Wait. I may I may be seeing something. I was gonna say because I could do like this uh two seven and nine that would give me 18 i could use my bowl for that the eight ball all right then that would leave this 10 alone we already have the other 10 out here so i know if i do that i'm not gonna be able to get a strike or a spare so my other option i was kind of considering is i could do the 10 9 and the 7 that's 26 and i could use my top ball for that and then figure out the rest from there 
Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. I like that option a little bit better. So, uh, yeah, it's 26 total, and then I'll be able to use this ball for that. Uh, I'm kind of scared of my last options. Okay. That's not great. I don't know if there's much I can do here because I was going to either need a two for this 12 or a nine, but both nines are already gone. So I think that's going to be it for my first bowl is uh, I have this just kind of as is. There's not much I can do. So let me discard the balls I have and redraw, I guess, these two and see what I get. Um, that is not good. Because I can't even single out any of these. Um, 17, 19, can't do anything. So I think this is all I can really do for this uh, frame, which is knocked down six of them. So then I got four left. So that, that gives me a score of 80 at the end of frame number seven. All right, frame number eight. My bowling ball options are seven, nine, and eight. Um, I got a six and a four in the front, which is nice. That gives me 10. I think I want to do the six, four, seven. Then I can use my seven ball because that is 17. So let's see what the next one is. And it's a six. Okay. Yeah, this isn't the best situation here, mainly because the one thing I'm eyeballing is in the back here. That makes nine plus nine, 18. I do have this eight ball up top, which would be good. But then the options it leaves me with is what I don't like because I have that's basically just seven, which I don't have any more sevens. That would give me 10, but there's are you going to need to be 110 here. So the combinations just aren't really looking too good. I mean, I could do the five and the four. That's nine. But then my other nine is there that I would need to use and I wouldn't be able to get that nine by itself. I think whatever do whatever I do, I'm pretty screwed. I think regardless. Another thing I was looking at four, ten, and two that gives me sixteen. That does let me use my front ball. But then the five and the three will be kind of separated on their own. The other five is right there, so I'm not going to be able to use that. So I think whatever I do, I'm not going to get a strike or a spare this round. I, I just don't think the cards are looking like it's going to happen. So I'm going to go with my initial plan of doing the eighteen with the uh, eight ball and seeing what else I can do after. Uh, that gives me an ace, which I don't think helps me a whole lot in my situation. Yeah, because I mean, I, can, I can't do anything just by itself. I mean, I have 13, 15, 17, 10, 10. So I think this is uh, it for the first ball. And then we'll have to see what my next options are. We have eight, okay, and a one, I don't think I still have anything, right? This is still pretty much the same options. 7, 10, 17, 15. Uh, none of those work for what I have. So that's another 6 for an 86. Man, I'm going to barely break 100, which is... I'm not too familiar with bowling, but I think um, <laughs> barely breaking 100 is kind of amateur hour. All right, frame number 9, the penultimate frame... Let's see if I can get another strike or a spare in these last two frames. Hope so. Uh, my bowling ball options are 7, 10, and 4. Looking out, um, I do have some options right off the bat. I mean, this gives me uh, 17, which would be good for my 7. Uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. I wish it was connected to a 10, but I'll go ahead and start with that, and then we'll see how stuff looks after. Uh, and I get a 7. Okay. Well, six, six, and eight, that gives me 20, which I believe I can use my 10 for. So I'll go ahead and do that and see what that leaves me with. That gives me a three. Okay, well, I mean, I have five and two over here, which I can discard to get uh, seven. I can use my seven ball for that. And let's see what I flip over. I'm kind of curious. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. No. Because, I mean, I, my options are 5, 1, and 4. I can combine those and get 6. Mine all of them get 10. Or I got a 5 here. Um, I can just knock out the singular 4 with my 4 ball. But then I'm really going to be at the whim of the cards. See what I get. And that's a 9. Which is uh, no good in my situation. So let me discard the top balls. And try one more time to see if I can knock these pins down. And unfortunately, I doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. So it looks like that's an eight 
for this round, giving me 94 going into the final frame. All right, and here is the final frame. Let's hope I can at least knock six of these down to at least get a score of 100. That would be nice. Um, so my bowling ball options are four, seven, and 10. Looking at my pin options, trying to use the four if possible. And it looks like I could with this two, eight, and four. That gives me 14, which seems like a good option. So I'll go ahead and discard those, discard my four ball, see what I get. And it's another seven, ooh. Okay, well, I do see kind of an interesting play, which I think is pretty much one of the few things I can do is two, three, five, that gives me 10. I'll use my 10 for that. I could also use that five. I'm gonna keep that there in hopes that it can help me out. Please don't give me another seven. I guess there isn't another seven. That's not much better though. Another 10, I, I don't think I can really use that at all. The seven, I don't know if I can use, because I mean, that's 11, that's 14, that's just 11, that's nine. Nine, eight. Yeah, well, so I'm blind. I'm not seeing anything I can do with the seven, seven or 10. So no strike. Let's see if I can at least get a spare. That would be kind of nice. Um, okay, so got an ace and a nine to work with. I think I'm trying to, oh wait, this is good. I can, I could just finish this, right? Because six and five, that's 11. I can use my ace for that. Doesn't even matter what the next ball is because I have a six and three left and that's nine, which I have a nine ball. So I get a spare on the last frame, which means I get to bowl one extra ball. That's it. So let's see what I can do. All right, so here is, I guess, my last frame. I only get one chance to try to knock down as many pins as possible. Uh, my bowling ball options are 10, six and nine. Not a lot of great options from what I'm seeing right off the bat. Um, what I'm thinking about is this 10, 5, 10, 5, and 1. That'd give me 16. Um, that's at least something. I mean, I could just knock down the 10, the 6. That's also an option for 16. I think I'll just do the 10, 5, and 1 just to knock down more stuff. And then I'll use my 6 ball for that and see what I get next. A 3. Okay. See the three, I mean, I have this seven, five, and ace, that would be 13, but then the issue is that we use this four by itself, which the other four is right there, so I'm not gonna be able to clear that if I do that. What I think I'll do first is use this 10 to clear this six and four in the back, and then we'll see what my other ball is. It's another nine. Oh, you'll love to see that. Okay, I kind of see a plan here. So I got this two and this one. I'm gonna use the three on that, and I basically am just gonna be banking on getting a seven. I don't think I've played the other seven. There it is. Oh my gosh. So I can use this seven to knock out the front seven. And then this five and the four, that makes nine. And I can use my nine ball and I get a strike on the very last frame, which I'm pretty sure you don't just keep going with more and more frames. I think even though that was a strike after a spare, but it's the last frame. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm just going to count that as as 10. Okay, so I might be doing the scoring wrong, but I think that gives me at the end of frame 10, because I add on this 20 for the spare and the strike, that gives me 114. And then for the final frame where I got a strike, I think I add on that last 10. So that gives me a total score of 124. Let me know if I'm doing that scoring completely wrong, but I think that's my final score, which I got above 100. So that's good. I only got, I got two three strikes technically and a spare. So not the best, not the worst, but uh, pretty happy with that score. And so that was Boeing Solitaire. I'll give my quick final thoughts. And my final thoughts in this game is I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I think this is the first kind of beat your own score style solo card game that I've covered on here so far. Um, I think especially given the Boeing theme, it feels pretty appropriate to just being a, uh, a beat your own store score style game, which the uh, the rules do come with this nice little score sheet that so you can do it bowling style. Um, I also like the fact that if you want to play like head to head with somebody, you still only need one deck of cards. You know, they they take two suits, you take two suits and they can kind of play against each other using the same score pad and whatnot. But I think this game is a lot of fun, a lot of interesting decisions. Um, plays pretty quickly. I mean, you can play, if you just want to do a short frame, you can play as many frames as you want. You just want to play two or three frames, you could do that. You want to end at five frames and play like a half game, you could do that. Um, there's definitely ways to change it up. But 
yeah, overall, I mean, I think it's it's got a lot of decisions to make. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it wasn't until like this game that I started playing that I really started thinking more about, well, there's only two of each card. So if there's a seven here and a seven there, I single this seven out. So it's by itself. Well, I'm not going to get another seven because the other one's right there. So it wasn't until this last play that I really started making that connection. I feel like that also starts adding a bit more when you start thinking about like all your cards and kind of what options you have left. But um, yeah, overall, I really like it. it. Does use up a fair amount of table space to make the the pins you'll be knocking down. Um, I like the. It, it takes a while to wrap your head around the whole, the rules and whatnot and how like it works. But uh, once you get the hang of it, I think it's a really cool idea and how it kind of does feel like bowling, especially like you are rolling multiple balls, but it's only your first ball that you're like actually rolling and the rest you're kind of just like simulating the pins knocking down, which I think is a pretty, it, this game does it in a pretty clever way. And overall, um, I like it and I'll definitely play more of it in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I'll see you.